good morning everyone. And it's my pleasure and my honor to share with you our results on SUPAR in children, especially in children with pneumonia. Pneumonia also has a huge social economical impact on the developed countries due to the high percentage of the hospitalizations, up to 60% of all the children under five years of age with pneumonia will require hospitalization. Do we have a, any perfect marker for pneumonia in children? No. Do we have any satisfying marker for pneumonia? I wouldn't name at least one. Then went looking for the perfect or promising markers for, for pneumonia in children. And you might ask why we, we have chosen SUPAR. Well, going through all those papers, we found out that UPAR plays an important role in an innate lung immune response. And in animal models, UPAR knockout mice had much poorer outcome of pneumonia. SUPAR itself reflects more the fact of the inflammation than the etiology, which is most important to pediatric practice. In the first pilot study, we found out that children with pneumonia in fact had higher super levels, but we had no control groups to, uh, to compare. We found out that there was a positive correlation between super levels and C-reactive protein or procalcitonin. That's why we aimed first to compare super levels in children with pneumonia versus healthy children. And for this purpose, we, we created the control group of almost 112 uh, and 20 otherwise healthy children who are hospitalized in our department due to especially non-infectious diseases uh, and corresponded certainly in terms of gender and age. And we aim to assess a correlation between SUPAR and the severity of pneumonia. Severity of pneumonia assessed by the traditionally used inflammatory markers like C-reactive protein, procalcitonin, white blood cells count or, or neutrophil and lymphocyte count. Also with clinical markers like fever, time needed for the fever sense, oxygen blood saturation, heart and breath rate, uh, and the duration of hospital treatment and the duration of antibiotic treatment. And also we took into consideration the presence of the pleural complications. Our results showed that children with pneumonia in fact had much higher super values than those healthy controls. But if you take a look, we'll see that the level of 4.7 is quite a high level, especially when compared to, to other patients. And we did our best that, to be sure that those patients were in fact healthy children. The cutoff value of 4.7 showed quite an optimistic area under the curve 0.82 with satisfying sensitivity of 89% and a little too low specificity of 33%. Then we went further to, to see what's the risk of pneumonia. Uh, dividing the groups upon the basis of the median <coughs> level, which was 6.25, uh, it turned out that the children with super levels above this value, were at almost, at almost tenfold increased risk of having pneumonia than the children with lower values. Uh, but we found out that the cutoff value of 7.1, uh, patients with, with the values uh, above the 7.1, were at much higher risk of having total white blood cells count over the 20,000, which is important because in Poland it is direct indication for the hospital treatment in children. The patients did tend to have higher procalcitonin values, higher temperature at the admission, required longer hospital stay, and what needs to be verified were at almost 5.6 times higher risk of having pleural effusion. But when we saw this, we went we were stunned. The cutoff value of 10.58 showed 100% sensitivity, specificity, and whatever we wished uh, to distinguish children who are at risk of uh, having hospitalization treatment longer than 10 days. And I need to add that even the youngest children, if the pneumonia is treated right, won't need hospitalization and won't need antibiotic treatment longer than 10 days. 
So it's the uh, value that is important to us. To conclude, I would like to say that super is in fact increasing pneumonia and maybe it should even be treated in the future as a marker of pneumonia due to that pathophysiological paths. Uh, it does correlate with the severity of the disease uh, as we look at the all parameters, not the one specific. And uh, what is the most important, it help us to predict which patients run higher risk of longer hospitalization and who are at risk of complications. And what we have done here was distinguishing between healthy children and those with lower or higher risk of pneumonia. Uh, we found out that there's quite an optimistic cutoff value for uh, predicting which children will require longer hospitalization. We cannot say due to the lower group uh, what's the point for the pleural effusion risk. But what do we expect from super in pediatrics? Well, distinguishing from pneumonia and healthy patients, it may, not, uh, it may seem obvious, but trust me, in pediatrics, it's not that obvious as we would wish it would be. But we would uh, expect more from SUPA to help us, as we don't have 100% healthy children at the emergency room, we would like to help SUPA in distinguishing patients with upper respiratory tract from pneumonia or even between lower respiratory tracts, between, for example, bronchitis and pneumonia. Moreover, to predict the patients who are really running a higher risk of longer treatment or uh, pure complications. And maybe if we knew that they are at higher risk, it could in have an influence on the antibiotic treatment and guide us through another antibiotic options. Thank you very much for your attention. Great. I understood what you, what you were telling, and we're finally there. We found the patient group and the end point and the cutoff. High specificity, high specificity. 100%. Now we're there. Now we found it. Now we get it. <laughs> it. It's only 230 children worldwide, but let's start with something. This is good. Anyhow. So, so you would suggest that this is actually something that we could use in clinics, in pediatrics? Definitely. Definitely is one of the most promising markers. It was a part of the more wider study in which we didn't find out copeptin, for example, to, to be relevant in children with pneumonia anyway. Uh, hyponatremia did, did have an influence on the severity, but the problem in pediatrics is that there is no one evidence-based severity scale, uh, severity index, or even the way of scoring. Even the guidelines in the first line, they say that it is based upon the consensus, not the evidence-based medicine. So it is still the problem we do not have that end point to compare SUPAR with. So maybe SUPAR would be that end point, not uh, clinical. Thank you very Thank much. You very much.